Hey, friend. My whole phase started at age 52. Mm -hmm. I'm 54 years old. Started at 52. Now, when is it going to end? I can't tell you that. Only my knees can tell us that. Okay. What that mean? Honey, I'm out here living my best life. No regrets. Okay? I love you. Bye. I mean, it don't matter how old you are. You got to get one off. So, I don't even blame Auntie for that. I don't blame Auntie at all. She on the last leg of her life. Yeah, I just don't like black guys because they just like, I don't know, like... She can't take it. <laughs> They're just too much. I just can't deal. Yeah, she can't yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. Like, just the, the way they are. They're just too extra. Like, I just didn't do that. I don't know. That's messed up. You putting a stigma on all black men. All black men are not extra. Just like all white women are not Karens. The crazy thing, my black kings, she a Latina. We have a weakness for Latinas. To us, it's like driving a foreign. Who don't want a foreign car? But look how they, look, look, look. Look, look. I feel as though she curious. She just talking, she curious. She haven't got bitten by that brown snake yet. I'm work a bar shift with me at Hooters. By the time I got there, it was already really busy, so I had to jump right into action. This is my regular, he brought me cheesecake, but I couldn't even eat it yet because I had to get started. This is me doing my- Being a regular for a waitress at Hooters is crazy. Young lady, you need to check to make sure he not on that registry. Because this is registry behavior. Thing making the drinks, and I didn't really get to record a lot because it was so busy. At this point, my shift was over, and it was time to put my tips in. And I just love when my tip jar is full. Like, look at that. So here I am putting my tips in, and my regular had things to say. Yes, she smells great. Holy crap! Um, why I drive an hour to see my Ia? You've got an amazing body. You have a great personality, and I can talk to you about anything. It's just refreshing that I can do that. I'm work a bar shift with me at Hooters. But Maybe there's a reason why you put that online, you know what I'm saying? Maybe this is for your protection. Because right now, he's giving kidnapper white van. I feel as though he's a stalker. This is not flattering. Fellas, if you know somebody that is doing things like this, find them help. Crazy thing is, he probably have a family at home. A few years ago, I was in a relationship with a Nigerian man. And the reason that that detail matters, you'll find out very soon. One thing that consistently bothered me in our relationship is that whenever I slept over at his place or he slept over at mine, whenever I woke up, he was always on his phone, texting his friends in the group chat or playing games, and he wouldn't put his phone down to be present with me. And I don't know. I, I have a Nigerian best friend. I have Nigerian friends. Some of y'all may not agree with this, but y'all are the hardest people to be in relationships with. Bro, sometimes I be having to talk my boy out of certain shit. I be like, bro, you wildin'. I feel as though maybe you could have handled it a little bit better. The thing about y'all, my Nigerian brothers, y'all yeah, have control issues. I thought it was annoying and unromantic and also bad sleep hygiene. It really bothered me. I told him and we would fight about it a lot. And I remember talking to my therapist at the time about it, saying it was one of those things in the relationship that was actually really bothering me. And she said, well, Chloe, he's from Africa. Maybe he's never had a bed before. Maybe he doesn't know what normal, considerate bed behavior is. And before you ask, yes, she was from BetterHelp. I found her on BetterHelp. She was a BetterHelp therapist, obviously. No, no, I didn't think she was going there with that. That's that closed-minded thinking that got y'all up now people still think that every country in africa starving i can blame them now because we have the internet back then i used to think that kids in africa was walking around with their stomach poking out and flies on their face i used to think that too because that's all we used to see on tv on tv that is how they presented africa to us now you see they got big ass skyscrapers some of the richest men live in africa it's 2024 she should know better my ex got revenge on me in the worst way possible and i have no way to clear my name last year i cheated on my ex-girlfriend of eight years annie with a colleague Jess, who I now have a three-week-old son with, I have no excuse. It cost me my job and the majority of my friendships, along with the love of a good woman. It majority of infidelities happen at the workplace. Just remember that. You send your girl to work, it's somebody at the job plotting on them cheeks. She don't even got to be the baddest thing on the job. If she's f***able... 
somebody's at the job plotting on them cheeks. In the final stretch of Jess's pregnancy, about a month ago, I saw Annie in a shop for the first time since the breakup. She was pretty cold towards me, but said a few months ago she found a keychain my granddad got me when I was very young. It's not valuable, but she knows it means a lot to me. And she said I could come and collect it in the fall in collect it the following Saturday morning. I when I got to my old house, Annie invited me in to talk about how things ended between us. She let me apologize for the way I treated her, wished me the best with my new family, and hugged me as I left. When I arrived at the hospital after seeing Annie, Jess had revoked my access, pulling Jess and her mum over and over. And the only response I got was a screen recording of a message from Annie. It was the doorbell footage of me walking through the door at 9.30, then back out after 10.15. The hug is only partly caught, so it does look like it could have been kissing. The message Annie sent with it said, did he even shower and change his clothes between me and holding his son? Congratulations on being stuck with him for the next 18 years. My ex got revenge on me in the... The crazy thing is, I don't even feel sorry for you. You cheated on your girlfriend of eight years with your co-worker, you had a baby with your co-worker. What you think? Your ex-girlfriend was just gonna welcome you back with open arms? Come on, player. Did you really go for the keychain or did you go expecting something else? Even if you wasn't trying to smash, even if you wasn't trying to pull a power play on your ex by, you know, putting yourself in a situation where you could possibly turn her down. You deserve this. I still know it's a few of y'all that watch these videos religiously that aren't subscribed. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. And make sure you got the notification bell selected to all. That way you can get all the notifications when I upload these videos. Stop playing with me. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get right. Maturing is realizing that most men's first intimate experience was really SA. Ask them how old she was. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this thread on Facebook, but when I tell you the comments are so sad. I was about seven to eight -ish. She was my older cousin, 15, 16, non-blood related. She used to isolate me when we would have the family get togethers, barbecues and whatnot, take me in rooms by myself. And one day I became aware of what was actually happening and I threatened to tell and she told me nobody would believe me. And she would just say I was lying because she was older. They would believe her. I never said anything. I was 12 and she was around 24 to 25. She was my mom's friend and my babysitter. And unfortunately my mother was incarcerated at the time. I originally gave consent because I was trying to be grown like my older cousins, but in the midst of the act, I began to feel really uncomfortable and asked her, could we stop? She stopped and begged me not to tell anyone because she could go to jail. I didn't say anything until years later. By that time, she had passed away. It wasn't, I became, it wasn't until I became an adult myself that I fully realized how wrong it was and how much it had an effect on my life. It made me extremely promiscuous at a very young age. I won't completely blame it on her because I took accountability, but I acknowledge that she played a huge role in that. And yes, this is a public thread. These are people putting these comments out publicly so anyone can see no private information was disclosed unwillingly. But this post is really just to show us that childhood trauma does affect us later in our adulthood. And I know a lot of us women, you know, we feel as if this is very common with us and it is, but it also happens in men. The fact that it was grown women, women well in their teens, their 20s, late adulthood, preying on young men from five, six, seven, eight, what? My woman, grown woman. A lot of women out there are also sick in the head. But notice how a lot of the comments said it wasn't until later on when I became an adult where I realized that this was wrong. I'm not going to talk my personal business on here. But, um, I do have some, some childhood trauma to get over. I haven't told anybody this and I'm not going to come out and say it publicly for the first time. But, You know, it didn't go it didn't go that far, but I had a family member that was trying to groom me. You feel me? And at the time, I didn't know no better. I was actually that's when I was living in the Caribbean still. So, I didn't know no better at the time. It wasn't until like I got older and I started paying attention to things and I'm like, "Hold on, that wasn't right. Why was you trying to do this?" Do y'all ever look at your check and just be like, I'm so happy that I'm a woman because like sometimes you're making the same amount as a man and like they pay for fucking everything. I mean like everything. Just think about it. Like when you go on a date, first date, like obviously if a man doesn't pay, you're not going to give him a second date. 
But just imagine if you and this man make the same amount of money and he's expected to pay for like first, second, third date and like the majority of stuff. Like, of course, we pay for stuff, too. But like the guys are just expected. Like if, if a guy does not pay for the first date, are you going to are you going to go back out with him? No, probably not. Now, imagine your salary. But having to actually spend it on somebody else and still keep up the expensive habits that you have, like still keeping up your makeup, still keeping up your hair. The hair is. It's amazing to me that keeping up your expensive habits is a thing. It's amazing to me people don't have the money, but still would spend their last on keeping up their expensive habits. This goes for women and it goes for men too. I have friends who can't afford the 3.5s that they smoke on a daily basis. And when the phone bill come, when the light bill come, you don't have it. Expensive. We already know how much hair is. Still keeping up, I don't know, whatever your bad habit, mine is travel, travel, whatever. And having to include another person, like, damn, when that bill come, like, ugh, that's my f***ing hungry again. Damn. God knows my heart. You know, I couldn't take no extra struggle. I'm not going to lie. I'm so tired of making these these videos because it feels as though I'm saying the same thing over and over. She's saying all that, but if she go on her first date with somebody, she's not going to split the bill. She expect him to... How did you lose your virginity? Was it a good experience, bad experience? I, wow. had, a, I had a good That's experience. That's really personal. Is it? You shouldn't ask questions well, like that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it was with my first boyfriend. He was yeah. Really... Where's he I'm now? Where's he I'm still dating him. Three oh my God, really? Yeah. Congratulations. Almost That's actually f***ing dope. Yeah. You guys got to get... Wow. I never understand why people decide to go do these street interviews and then try to become all high and mighty. At the end of the day, they're looking for content. They trying to go viral. So they will ask you things that could possibly benefit them in the long run. Oh, look yeah. at that. I was yeah, about to say, you know, honestly, that's the dream right there. Yeah. Hopefully I end up like you guys one day, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, uh. You might not, though. I might not? Probably no. not, no. Why not? For, we have because really my boyfriend is, like, top tier. Like, He's top tier? That's yeah. true. What makes him top tier? Give us some qualities. He's the best boyfriend ever. Why? You gotta explain why. Because he listens to me. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, exactly. He does everything you want, right? It's a really hard thing for guys. So, well, I wouldn't listen. Things. Are you saying that I'm not capable of listening to somebody? Um, <laughs> She's I mean, like, most guys, well, first so. of all, you're shorter than me. Okay. <gasps> no. Okay. You know, like, no. No. That was uncalled for. That was uncalled for. I wasn't expecting that. Every chance y'all get, y'all try to throw some short man slander. She wanted to say that so bad, it was just in her mind. That's all. Well, who said I'm going for you, though? Thank huh? you. Who said I'm going to go for you? Thank you. Obviously, I want to go for you because you're taller than me. I mean, like, I'm model, so, like, a, a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't get where you're going with this. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, like, what do you do for a living? What? She wanted to break this man down so bad. She wanted to assassinate this man's character so bad. She wanted to find something. First it started with the boyfriend thing. That didn't work. It started with the short thing. That didn't really work. Then it's... What, so what do you do for a living? He's doing it right now. He probably make way more money than you. That was so uncalled for. Y'all know how I feel about the short man slander. There was no need for that. It was a perfect interview. He gave her and her boyfriend a compliment. That wasn't enough. Well... He did get his viral moment. I'm low-key starting to see why the ladies are saying that the men are becoming sassy, honey. Because the defensiveness and the bullying, and even when I see men post videos, <laughs> I don't know if it's the new generation or what, but some of the men, the way they comment on social media, it's like, okay, relax, sweetheart. It's okay. I hate the sassy word. Stop calling grown men sassy. Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate. I react to a lot of videos on Instagram, and with my reactions, sometimes I read the comments. I go through the comment section, and I see a lot of comments from grown men looking for excuses to tear some of these women down. Even in videos that she was siding with us, not not this young lady here, but I've seen videos where the young lady was actually making a point for men. And in the comment section, grown men are still trying to find ways to tear her down. Now, with that being said, young lady, I don't know... If you have been watching the things going on on the internet, but our new generation of ladies, it has been a lot of ridiculous expectations being put out there. I do feel as though because of all the ridiculous things, a lot of the guys, they don't even use discernment when they comment. 